hover over record. Okay. Three, but how will I clap? <laughs> you do the clubs afterwards. You do this to me every fucking week. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Year of Shame podcast and tonight it's me David Southall joined by the beautiful Mr Matthew Moore Hey, and sitting next to him on my screen at least it's the wonderful Neil Jarre hello everyone and who's this lurking in the dark it's our star guest of the evening star of year one and year four of the Era Shame, it's Mr. Jason Stokes. You Yay! bastard. I'd never want to be involved in this shit ever again. But you <laughs> me back. Just like Godfather, isn't it? Just when you thought you got out six years ago, we dragged you back. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, glad to be on, boys. Um, I don't know what you're going to talk about, but I'm sure <laughs> it's going to be fantastic with you fine people. I want to hear all you. about your pain. <laughs> There's no pain. It's just gain. <laughs> yeah, it's just game. Right. So, yeah, not only were you one of the original pioneers on this silly podcast, you made the foolish decision to come and join in for a second time. So are you OK, is what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> I was never OK, Dave. Everyone who has met me knows this. Um, the first one was a bit of an experiment I wanted to get involved in uh, because I admitted I had a bit of a problem with buying all the games and not completing any games. Um I did the fourth one to try and complete the games that I didn't finish on the first one. Um, and then since then, I've probably completed no more games. So <laughs> it, obviously the, the system really worked. <laughs> right. Yeah. I better throw my questions right out the window then here. Yeah, I would say. You were ne- uh, from memory, I think, though, Jace, you were never a completionist anyway. The games you play are, are old scoreboard-based, aren't they? Not necessarily, because I'm famous for not completing games. Like, for example... <laughs> I've still not completed the story on Grand Theft Auto 6 that's been out, or 5, that's been out for seven generations of consoles. I started playing it on the Spectrum. I'm still playing it on a Series X, and I haven't completed the story yet. Um, yeah, I'm not very good at finishing games. Why? I'm not Why? Finished. Why is I'm not that? Finished. I, I don't know. I, I get super, super into games. Like this year, I've been super into um, Halo Infinite, super duper into that. Didn't complete the campaign. Um, super duper into Elden Ring, like massively. Um, didn't complete it. I don't know. I think there's something in me where I something comes along, like life-wise or work-wise or kids-wise, right. and I need to um, I need to have a break from it or something, or we go away, and then I come back and I just simply cannot get back into it. And I tell myself I must make time to remember where I was. And you know the old thing of going back yep. into a game and you don't know where you were. Yeah, and. It's like a massive mental barrier that I can't climb over. It's just impossible for me to get back into these games. And I always, almost have to restart. Is this trauma from you in your first year of shame? Uh, and you were saying you still had games left over on the third. I mean, that's a hell of a gap. You must have forgot where you were then. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've probably... Um, the, the trouble is, um, I've always been that way with not completing games. But when I'm super into a game, I will complete it. Like, for example, when... Um, uh, for example, Burnout Paradise came out. I played absolutely nothing but that game for 125 hours over the space of two weeks Jeez. until I'd popped every single achievement, absolutely completed it, because it was a game that really triggered me. Um, I thought I was going to be the same with Elden Ring. I thought I was going to keep battling through. Um, mm. But again, something just interrupted that flow. Or I had to get back into Rocket League or something like that. Um, I don't know. But... Yeah, it's usually Rocket League that spoils it. <laughs> I think the, I, yeah, I was about to say, Jason, I think because the, the game I see you playing regularly when I see you online, most evenings, when I, if I do clock your name through my like friends list, it generally is Rocket League when you're playing duos. You know, the problem is when I did the Year of Shame, yes. four, the fourth one, 2016, yes. was the year that Rocket League came out. It came out back end of 2015, but I hadn't got it. So I didn't get it for that entire year. And the first thing I bought when I finished Year of Shame was Rocket League because it had been out for all that time and everyone was uh, loving it and, and hyped about it. Um, from that moment when I did get it, it became everything to me. It became 
because it is the most perfect physics-based sports game of all. Um, it's the same every time. The physics engine's perfect. And I've now played almost 3,000 hours of it. And okay. it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I've got to ask a question, Chase. Go ask a question, fella. The physics of that, do you still just gun it for the ball at the start of every match because that's <laughs> what you do? Oh, you have to, yeah. You pretty much have to, yeah. But some people are like ridiculously even more fast. Um, we do play regular games um, for community games with the um, guys over at Complete Xbox. And um, we have like, literally people of all different skill levels all playing. And uh, those are fun ones. I'm, I'm not a few people in the, our community have got involved in those as well. I don't know mm. if you've ever actually watched Jace play uh, Rocket yes, League, I have. but it, it's it's like watching someone play with cheats on. It defies the laws of physics. I, I'm yeah. like mediocre. And you think, I watched people play who are at the top of the top level. Like this, this weekend just gone was the Rocket League World Championships obviously the very best players in the world and the things that these guys do and the level of control you just think i'm never going to get to that point i'm too old my fingers don't work Not i can't true, Jay. remap my controls oh. i can't do those things but um i suppose in a kind of way i'm almost appears to be at the level to somebody who's at the bottom yes um, exactly weird. looking Absolutely. looking up looking up the ladder uh yeah, you're you're in God mode, mate. When I've seen you play, it's like it's like it's it's like you've got it in the controller in one hand, and you just you know I don't use anything else with the other hand. Like you know, just looking outside, looking at the weather. Like you, it seems effortless to you when you play it. So no, three thousand hours. Fuck, that's some dedication. Roy Castle needs to have a word here. But there we go. There's plenty of Rocket League chat. <laughs> yeah, no, we, Jace, Max, Jace what, why don't we dial this right back? Why don't you tell us about your gaming journey from where you started and what you all went the way. through? Fuck you now. Well, um, it depends how many you have. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no. Um, so I've been gaming for forever and a day, uh, like your good selves. Uh, my first machine was, um, in, well, was seven years old, 1984, Spectrum 48K popped into my life on uh, Christmas Day. Yes, I Jace. used to play, I started off playing um, Spectrum Pool, which was the most amazing pool game at the time. Um, I played Blackhawk. I played um, Dizzy games like nothing else. I used to play Dizzy all the time. So Fancy Treasure World, Island, Dizzy. Uh, Fancy. Or, yeah, Treasure Island, Fancy World, all those. Um, that was my kind of jam. Um, and obviously from there, I went through the Commodore era. I went through, um, I was never a Nintendo guy. So I was Master System. I yeah, me was too. Mega Drive. Um, missed out the generations of Saturn and things like that because I was, um, yeah, I couldn't have all those. Um, Missing girls. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit of that. Yeah, of that. that's what I was doing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cider and um, fingering, that's what it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you call <laughs> it. 60, you, you call it 64 bit, I call it getting your collar wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I had a bit of uh, a few years away from games of that sort of era. And then when I went in the army, um, I didn't play many because I was a bit busy armying and again doing <laughs> things with girls. Um, <laughs> and, um, I think when I was living in Germany, that's when I picked up the original Xbox. So that got me right back on the bus then. Um, and then obviously I've been Xbox ever since then. Um, yeah, playing awesome. all the games. Quick question, Jace. Spectrum or Commodore 64? To do what? Favourite. Oh. Got to put you on the spot. There'll be a poll. It's difficult, mate, because they're both fantastic for their own things i think because i've got such an attachment and i did have the spectrum it was my first machine i will have to pick it but i've got so many memories of playing things like uh what was i playing um things like supremacy when i first got commodore and you could play a game like supremacy which was a uh, planetary resource game effectively um it played so much better on the commodore because you had the different palette and the sound and everything um so yeah always spectrum but commodore still got a big place for me good man which good answer and it had such it had like cartridges and things you remember playing terminator you could just plug in the cartridge it was just something 
absolutely outstanding. I, I remember looking when I, when I knew that I was getting a um, uh, Sega Mega Drive. I think it was my first console, first proper console. It was a Tavi ST before then. This the anticipation of knowing that I could just plug something in and turn it on, and it would just be there. Like I, that, that was just I loved it. Loved my abiding memory of Mega Drive will always be because um, I didn't get one straight away. Um, we were very poor. Um, but we used to go, on the way back from school, we used to go into Curry's or whatever it was, Dixon's, whatever it was at the time. Um, and they'd let you play on the machines, but they, they'd, they'd time out after about 20 minutes. So they'd always have Alter Beast in. It was always the cartridge that was in the machine. <laughs> and we'd just play Alter Beast for 20 minutes every day after we came home from school. And the, the, the amount of progress we could make through that game in 20 minutes obviously <laughs> went up. And they, they got wise to us and stopped us doing it after a few weeks. But <laughs> yeah. it was definitely the thing, like, every day. Does that make you the world's first altered beast speedrunner? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I think we need to look into that. Through that necessity. Through. Yeah. Don't don't expect me to try and do it these days, blimey. Not with these old <laughs> reflexes. <laughs> Did you ever play any of the games in like um like pubs or arcades or anything like that? Because we, we were a similar sort of an age. Like I oh, played Double Dragon yeah. in a chippy. See, yeah, I yeah. um I grew up loving arcade machines. So um, again, going back to school, there was a chippy that had the Street Fighter 2 cabin and I was the school Street Fighter 2 champion because we used to have com- literal competitions every Friday in the chippy. Everyone would get a bag of chips or Kona chips at the time, 25p, and uh, play some Street Fighter. And uh, I used to use Sagat all the time. And uh, yeah, I was literally school champion for a while. That was pretty good. I was also school Tetris champion when the Game Boy was around, around as well. Nice. Uh, Tetris has always been a massive part of my life. I, I've still got Game Boys now that I pop out of my bag and, and play Tetris regularly. Um, like when me and Will used to go to um, EGX, I used to have my Game Boy Advance SP in my pocket to play Tetris in the queues just because there's no better way of passing time. Um, so, yeah, and arcade machines as well, because we used to live in pubs. I used to grow up in pubs as well. Um, my mum used to run pubs. We used to have like a regular rotation of arcade machines. So uh, I used to get to choose from the list what the next one would be. And uh, one day the guy come in and he wasn't on the back of the van. He's got this cabinet and I'm like, that looks incredible. I want that. So we put it in the pub and it was Race Storm. I don't know if you've ever played that vertical oh, um, classic shooter. Vertical shooter. Absolutely incredible. Um, played the absolute shit out of that. I wouldn't let him take it out for months at a time, but everyone was bored of playing this machine. Uh, but uh, during the day, those days, we also had things like um, Super Striker and um, again, another Street Fighter cab and all those, all those classic arcade ones. I absolutely loved them. Jace, that's the absolute dream to be able to pick which arcade game comes in. <laughs> I want to be reincarnated as Baby Stokes. Well, we, we, were in that pub. we were in that pub when I was like 15, 16, I think. Um, the last two years of school, I think I had about 11% attendance because I was working in the pub and playing pool and that all the time. Um, but yeah, just being able to choose the arcade machines at that age is like, yes, please, I'm the god. So like, it came to my... I think 16th birthday, and basically everyone just came to the pub. We played pool, played arcades, got pissed a bit. And uh... that sounds <laughs> like my life now. It's basically drinking and arcade machines. <laughs> yeah, it, that's it's a weird kind of paradigm that, that actually that is you now, where it was Jay's 35 years ago. That's weird. <laughs> Not that old Neil, fucking hell. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I meant, I meant to say 15 years ago. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. 30. <clears throat> Jason, how, how much is a high score important to an arcade game? Um, it depends on the type of game, mate. Honestly, if it's mm-hmm. a shooter, obviously high score is what it's all about. But um, I'm perfectly happy playing things uh, just for the fun of it. I've I've been up recently um, to the arcade club up in uh, Leeds. Try a bit of that out. And uh, desperate to get there. I took my son there, and sadly he. Um, got a bit ill that day with covid so um we had to r- rush out of there and, and try not to infect anyone but i'd love to go back up there and, and give it a proper sesh just on my own or with somebody of a similar age so we can just do that proper reminisce bit because you can't do that with the kids um i'm desperate to arrange some sort of a meet there i think it'd be the greatest venue of all oh absolutely incredible mate can you hire it out, or do you, I believe you it... can. Um, I don't I don't suppose it's cheap because there's m- so many people go through there, but um, I think it can be done. Hmm, that's mm. awesome. Interesting. Food for thought. Is, 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 that, is that a little kernel there, maybe? <laughs> yeah. I, I was just going to ask Jace. So, how did you end up getting involved in the midlife gamer community, which uh, obviously led to? Oh, yeah. 
the year of shame. Yeah, so, uh, blimey. There was a period when um, I was single, I was on my own, I was playing an awful lot of games on my own, and I didn't really have um, a great deal of social going on, as I still don't now, but um, I've never been a massively social person you know, with loads of mates and stuff. But um, I was looking for online places to enjoy games with. So I got involved initially with, um, it was back in, when I was playing Pro Evolution Soccer 5, uh, massively playing that all the time, almost like I do with Rocket League now. Um, but I got involved in some online leagues with that. Um, that kind of split apart into some different like forum sites and stuff. So lots of um, people doing that kind of thing. That's where I met uh, Willie, who used to do Console Ninjas podcast with. Um, mm. And I think we then stumbled across Midlife Gamer as we were looking for a, a new community to, to call home. And uh, obviously that was a ways back when now. It feels like such a long time ago, doesn't it, when you think back? To those... I don't like to think too much because it yeah. exacerbates how old you are. realise how actually how old you are. I know it's horrible. All right, okay, okay. Well, now, now, we're, now we're talking about the kind of ilk who, uh, who, who were dealing with online communities and the, the Wild West sort of like 11, 12 years ago. Would you rather go back to that and forums and having a, a smaller community with a personality, or were you fine with open social media and having to put up with everyone? No, I'm this fine. Where, this I'm is where fine. we ask the hard questions here, no, James. It's good. Fucking hell. I did not know we were a panorama. <laughs> is, is, is this Matthew I'm, looking, I'm, looking I'm, for I'm a stand, reflection on himself here? I'm, stand, I'm standing up. This is what happens. <laughs> yeah, he can concentrate. <laughs> yeah, due to the standing desk, we're not allowed to play any music, or otherwise <laughs> Matt starts bopping. <laughs> no, I think um, I'm I'm all right with it as it is now. Um, I think those old forum days and the smaller communities were very much of their time, and I'm sure there's lots of those that still go now, and they're best of mates and stuff like that. And I've been long to uh, some meetups for different. Uh, smaller groups like that and it's all very insular and it's all in jokes and everyone uh, back slapping each other and I'm <laughs> as much as it's all right for them people that's not it's not for me I like to I like to expand that circle and um, have a wider range of opinions to read so in something obviously our community is mostly based around Facebook and stuff at the moment um, you get new people popping in and you get different opinions and you get you get people right across the board, as we know now. You've got people who are developers. You've got people who are um, old school retro gamers like us. You have people that are fairly new to gaming that probably don't fit in the midlife game category. But all those different opinions give you a rounder picture of what's going on in the community, and uh, it makes it more of a community for me. Um, there are some people whose posts I love to mute straight away, but um, that's always going to be the case. I'm sure a lot of people do that with mine. Good answer. He's cracking out some awesome answers tonight, I think. He's he makes out he's not prepped. He's got six years worth of content just to screw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think I do when I sit there for 3,000 hours with him kicking a plastic ball around with a car? I, I, I think of things to say. <laughs> yeah. And I just sit there longing golf. for somebody to invite me to a, yeah. uh, to a podcast somebody, to get it all off. bring me back. You, you mentioned disc golf there, didn't you, Dave? Um, yeah. So another thing that, that keeps me from playing games at the minute, um, as I'm sure most of the people know, is uh, I got massively into, a few years ago, I got massively into uh, a new sport, uh, which is disc golf. So basically, rather than playing golf with a little tiny ball and a little tiny hole that's 50 miles away, we uh, use these fancy frisbees and we play this game called disc golf. Um, I'm I'm really quite into that. It's, it's something um, that seems to fit exactly in the circle i'm in so you think of uh, a venn diagram of gamers and disc golfers it's exactly a circle they're the same kinds of people so because i fell into disc golf kind of by accident but met the same sort of people that i meet when we do mlgx and stuff mm. our kind of people uh because it appeals to people of, of, of our type and um i got so massively into it. i um in 2020 donna and i started a um like a charitable organization a community organization to bring our sport to more children families um so now we take our equipment to schools take it to scout camps and um teach people our sport get them involved and uh, get people off the sofa 
uh, away from consoles and, and doing a bit of sport. Stay you, away you, from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting you involved, Dave. You'll love it. Stay away from Dave. Are you still building up a sweat doing that? It's not It's not something in the safe, is it? We call it uh, stealth fitness when we're teaching it to kids and stuff because um, you use. You imagine when you're throwing frisbee that, you're using a lot of your body. You're moving around, you're picking it up, you're throwing it. Um, and if you're walking around a golf course for a couple of hours as well playing, uh, you're obviously getting a bit, a bit of fitness in as well, which we could all do with Sneaky. a bit more. That's but, awesome, Jace. I had no idea that you'd yeah, uh, I mean, started right. that, that kind well, of I need to, proactive um, action about it. I need to uh, get more people involved, and I want to uh, organise something with more of the, our community members because um, I've taken Mr. Watley and Mr. Spink out to play before. And did, they Watley did, in, did he injure himself, himself, Watley? He did. He kind of slipped down a hill and broke his ankle and then yeah, played the rest okay, of the round yeah, with um, a broken ankle. Um but the, the, the maddest thing was we went out on that day. We were around a place called Horsenden Hill in London, playing around the course. Those guys were filming every shot on every hole that we did. Um, we got to, I think it was like the 16th hole or 15th or something like that. And they stopped recording. And I promptly threw in a 72-meter uh, hole in one, basically an ace, down the hill. Turned around expecting it to be on camera. It was the first, <laughs> one, the first one I've ever got. Uh, no, we didn't record that one, Jase. Oh, no, my, my battery's running out on my phone. Sorry, mate. But Dave Boys knows it. know it happens, so yeah. <laughs> but yeah, again, um, go on. I'm just saying, uh, Talk, talking about injuries at meetups, yeah. uh, did you oh, know about God. the time Jace almost killed me? <laughs> no, Genuinely. I've, never heard, I've never heard this story. Well, I'd, I'd been in, uh, in, in an incident, basically, and uh, I had a couple of broken ribs. And we went to MLG, MLGX, sorry, that is. Uh, and unbeknownst to me, Jace creeped up behind me <laughs> and gave me a great big proper hard bear. <laughs> At which point I literally passed out on the floor for a second. <laughs> Didn't realise he had broken ribs, did I? I was yeah. just going to give him love. <laughs> Tough love. Like, and he's there, I, like, I, I, I thought come that in, I'm, I'm going to die. <laughs> I literally thought I'd killed the man. I was like, oh, can I have your arcade machines? <laughs> You've got form for that strength when it comes to greeting. And when I mentioned to the wife, I was like, oh, Jason's on tonight. She goes, oh, ask him if he can still pick me up with one arm. I was like, yes, that's my boy. Flexing yeah, all day long. You know, you know, Joe loves to uh, do a few, let me get do a few squats with her legs wrapped around me. In, in a purely <laughs> platonic fashion, of course. But uh, yeah. I do miss those uh, those meetup things, and obviously now we're we've come out the other side of the pandemic. Because I am looking forward to the next time we can all get together and uh, and do all that f- flesh pressing that we've all missed. Uh, now it's more safe to do so. Yeah, yeah. So are we, mate. So are we definitely. But you should definitely with this um, with the disc golf stuff, Jace. Um, get it on in both Facebook groups. Get, like get people knowing about it, especially the charitable kind of. Yes. kind of element that you're doing and get awareness and stuff like that just you've got look all all of us have got admin rights to both, admin both approved groups. yeah <laughs> so uh pre-approved uh anything you want to post about that jace because anything that that helps you know stealthily get kids talking to each other in out out of the house and stuff like that and kind of making friends and stuff like that that may be socially awkward or kind of suffering from mental health issues and all those kind of things is is an awesome thing so yeah get it out there mate yeah, yeah absolutely full, full yeah um, I, I will be um putting together um kind of i'm, I'm, I'm planning a, like a mini documentary about the sport and stuff to, to get people a bit more information so um yeah, as I work towards that, I will put some stuff out. I appreciate that support on that. Point. No, you've you've yeah, got some incredible. callbacking, mate. Yeah, I, I think we should have a um, uh, an outing, a, a disc golf outing. Oh God, imagine! I, I like how you have to sort of be very careful with the cadence. If you say it too quick, <laughs> disc, disc golf. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a rat track against a golfer. You dissing disc golf. <laughs> it, it is. This is one of the things that I've said recently. Is it's very difficult to say the, the reason it's not called frisbee golf is all down to the company that owns the trademark for the word frisbee so in a professional setting we're not allowed to use the word frisbee golf although lots of people do call it that and it is probably a better name i've also tried to start coining the phrase air golf which is much easier to say recently so uh, i'll be pushing on that one oh, um, like that. <laughs> get that trademark in there jace absolutely man, absolutely um Bringing us back to the subject of the challenge, then, can you remember how big your 
piles of shame were on your two years? I mean, did you make much of a dent? The first one, I don't think we were we weren't we weren't properly in the old different classes of completion and stuff. We were very much about the the not buying. It was all that that was the main focus of it was the not buying. Um, and obviously back then we didn't have the game passes and we didn't have um, PlayStation Plus and these these on demand services. So I think it was much harder back then because um, you only had literally had your pile. Um, it kind of been harder because because you've said no to all these things, haven't you? Yeah, I would disagree <laughs> because now you've got all these options open to you, like like myself and well, most of us. You know, we've got Game Pass, but it's just got to sit there taunting us, withering. Yeah. I also yeah. think though, Dave, that you've you've got the easy cheat that you can. You've got so many different games that you can play on all your different machines that very true uh, it's never going to be difficult for you to get entertained is it <laughs> so now it's more about the completionist and stuff like that isn't it yeah i think um when we went to by the time we got to euro four they obviously the, the completion side of it was much more important um i probably had probably in excess of 80 games that were on my pile of shame i've probably got the list somewhere hidden away on a subfolder in box somewhere. If I remember correctly then, Jace, you didn't even use a Joker that year. No. Uh, you you I didn't. went through the entire thing. I think you. I think I remember quite clearly getting halfway through that year with you because it was me, you, A.D. Garlike and Matt Spink. Yep. And I think we remember getting halfway through that year and I was just like, Jace is a machine. Like, he's, he, he, he bends to no man. Like, he, he's not... He's, <laughs> He's not tempted by anything. He is he's, he's a man of will. It's like you're like it was like you know, fucking Mister Wick. It was. It was just I can like, get fairly single minded about things. If, if yeah. something is like certainly on on something like a Jace challenge, Wicks. and I think this is where it first came out with, with challenging me because I'll always I'll always take a challenge to do something. Like there's been high school challenges and there's been um, challenges to do certain things in games. Or if there's a particular achievement, I will single-mindedly go and do those things i don't know if you've ever been in any sort form of score challenge don't even think about entering if jace is in it because no, he no, will no, god damn no, beat you no, <laughs> even no. if it kills he'll, him he'll take two weeks off work i just, I just and, don't need to and sleep, plan his mate, meals you know around you know <laughs> Hey, we need more of that stuff. I, th- I think that stuff is 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 good to ignite a bit of um, competitiiveness. Um, oh, what happened to it's, your it's uh, your it's league all still there. thing? Yeah, that you're gonna do. I did do. Um, you'll remember um, a while back. I did do the a trial, like a pilot thing of the MLG Olympics, which was setting mm. particular challenges on games. I've got all the files. I've got all the all the 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 video all put together. I just haven't done the audio to go over the top. Um, I might just re invigorate that for the next month please so. do Jace, i will need someone to help me because laugh. just someone to keep me on track because uh yeah yeah a, a jc going unchecked is a bad jc yeah I, I need i need uh i need reining in sometimes <laughs> right then jace so what would you say then of your two attempts were the highs and lows of the challenges um the lows was obviously always missing out uh, that 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 feeling of missing out when other people were talking about games that's that's obviously one that you're familiar with now um especially this year there must have been some big ones that that you've missed out on but um as much as i've never really been a day one kind of person i think not being able to be that day one person was absolutely awful and i think in that year that we did four yeah. there were some big games coming out that year so massive. I can't remember of them, any of them, but I think, I think I'm scarred. I think, yeah, I did, from memory, I think there was stuff like, I'm pretty sure there was stuff like, well, there was No Man's Sky, there was like, I'm sure the Division 2 came out that year or something like that. Somebody will do some Googling now, but it was a, it was a tough year, that one, in, definitely. I remember quite vividly. It's like when there's a lot of choice it's, and you, you, you're, not, you're unable to make a free choice like a free man it's like almost like you are in prison that you don't get the option to, to do what you want to do you've got that kind of right taken away from you so when yeah that not being able to be a day one person when you to have the free will to do yeah. that if you wanted to yeah it's it's it can be punishing at times just that that fomo i suppose just seeing other yes. people and especially when people were having really good fun with things you're like oh i could be doing that 
just yeah. because of this stupid challenge that you've set me. Because back in that t- at that time as well, there was a lot of um, community nights. There were lots of people playing a lot of games together, you know, several nights a week yep. and things, stuff like that. So you went to know that when, you know, the next DLC or whatever came out for something or, you know, a, there was a n- new release and you couldn't get involved with it. It was a punch to the knackers. And you would yep. see an entire shift on your on your Xbox. Like you would mm. see all of your friends playing that and go, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, most exactly. that's most difficult. But yeah, I, I really miss that because everyone's because there's such choice there now with like with the game passes and and you know and PS Plus now. Um, everybody's so fragmented. Whereas before it used to be, this is coming out this month, everyone's getting it and everyone's yeah. jumping online. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think in the community there was so much of that uh, when we were all. Xbox 360, that was when yes. it was peak like that because everybody yes. in the community was on Absolutely. Xbox at that point. When the PS4 came out, I understand why and I understand the, the thing with it, but that kind of, for me, killed my online community experience quite a lot because I didn't get PS4 for ages. Um, I was very much yeah, Xbox. Um, and yeah, that that was a struggle when I was Xbox One, and there were fewer and fewer people. Um, an awful lot more people were going, oh, let's, let's hop across to PlayStation. So hey, Yes, yeah. I may have begrudged a few of those people, and uh, one of them might be still in the not spoken to him since. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but yeah, it, it, I think you hit the nail on the head, though, Jace, because I think I felt this exact same thing at the exact same time. Because I think being a community manager uh, for Midlife Gamer at that time, when everybody was three hundred and sixty, it was such a kind of such an exciting time that you could, you know, you had you know you could bend everybody to your will to like everybody joining in there were like where we'd have games where there were multiple lobbies of people and then when that choice of the when the playstation 4 came out and people jumped ship as it were yeah it was heartbreaking because i just kind of i just saw lots of people just bleed out and it was yeah it was horrible yeah during the back end of that 360 one i we used to have like a lot of like i think it was halo 4 at the time maybe Halo 3, maybe 3 or 4. Um, and yeah, that was the ones we used to have, like big team battles with just entirely people in the community, and it was it was yeah. something else. Um, Crackers. But yeah, you know, people have, have got their own groups, and, and things like Destiny obviously have pulled certain groups that are playing thousands of hours on that. Um, yeah. And then you have weirdos playing Rocket League. Um, people have... <laughs> people have People have died into like dived into games and there's like mini communities within those games as well, which is great to see. I love it, but uh, um, I think something was lost during that that transition period between generations. I agree. I agree with you definitely. Yeah. I, I was just going to add, it's ironic, isn't it? Now that uh, like Destiny, the thing that fragmented a lot of players, everyone can play together again now. Mm. If they want to pay five hundred pounds to get all the content and well, stuff. True. <laughs> Cheers, Bungie. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. I got a question. I got a question. Go, Matt. I got a question. Um, one of your first co-hosts, Cy Stevens, um, he did one of these a couple of months ago. Did you listen to it? I didn't, know. No, I, I will admit I haven't listened to that. What was what was Cy's big take? Go on. Oh, you have to he, listen he was, to find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other, than the fact, other than the fact he was still moaning that no one goes to Johnny Groats. Not with these fuel prices, they don't. No, I will. I will go back and listen because I do want to hear what uh, what Sai's got to say. Because uh, as I say, Sai was one of the originals, and uh, I think it changed something inside us. Um, it, I think it made us go, "Okay, I ain't doing this shit again." <laughs> <Till the next time. laughs> that that was actually my next question, Jace. It was going to be, did the challenge change you or any of your habits? I thought it was going to change me more. I thought it was going to get me onto the completionist thing a bit more because I mentioned before I don't complete games and I thought having that target of crossing games off which I did start to take seriously um, for a while I thought that was going to change the way I play things but no I've reverted back to type mate I'm still not completing games I'm still I don't buy as many games now and I think a lot of that is obviously the game pass and um, access to so many easy games cheap on Steam and things um, I think it's too easy to buy stuff now. I, I can't. Un, I can't understand why you wouldn't get the old bargains. You know, the, and that was one of the things as well, which used to kill was a Steam sale coming on when you've on the challenge to not buy games. It's like mm, the, one oh, that, the Steam sale, everything's free. Pal. Let's. I think it was go. one of my uh, 
about four weeks ago and I, I just had to refuse to even look at it. I couldn't. I, oh. <laughs> Well, I think the thing with those is Steam sales used to be absolutely insane. You could pick up things for pennies. Now they're just like a, a smaller bargain, a smaller discount on them. Whereas, you know, you used to get games for next to nothing on them. It's not the case really so much anymore. I could be wrong. Like I said, I've not really been looking this year. Yeah, I think having only bought a, a PC that can play video games two years ago, I think the first Steam sale that I came across was basically I, my jaw dropped. I was like, oh, my God, all these games, all these historical games that I've not played for ages that, I, you know, I can get them for, for 99 pence or I can get them for £2.50 and I can play them on my PC all in one place. So, yeah, I think these it, it went absolutely mental. I think it's, um, yeah, it's a different it's a different thing, but I still get, yeah, I, the last one that took place I had to avoid because I knew I'd be, it would just fuel my hatred for being in this challenge. I, I really regret having a wish list on Steam because basically oh, the whole year has been Steam moaning at me, just saying, <laughs> this is it. on sale, you know, you can yeah. buy this. Yeah, I had two <laughs> emails over the last two days telling me things had gone on sale. I was like, just piss off, leave me alone. I'm all right. Is, is, it against, is it against the ethos of your shame if you had an Amazon wish list that you had attached to an OnlyFans account and people were just, like, buying you games while you're not buying them yourself? Is that, is Does, that legit? Doesn't that count as a gift, though? You're, you can only have one gift. Oh, that's a good point. Sorry, subscribers. You have to wait till next year. <laughs> you can lavish me. Lavish me. That's two people really disappointed. He's, he's just got a website like, called... Jen, one of them's Darren and one of them's you. <laughs> <laughs> Darren is definitely kicking himself in the arse right now. <laughs> he's missing out on his gold. Yeah. So uh, my last question um, is, would you consider doing it again? I think I would. Um, that's probably not the answer you expected. Um, I would because I'd like to try and do the completionist thing again. I would like to get back into regular podcasting again because it is something I miss. Um, mm-hmm. And I think um, it might be an effort to get kind of back deeper into the community. I kind of feel on the fringe at the moment for various reasons because I'm I'm not playing a great deal. Um but maybe for those reasons I probably would do it again. I'm not I'm not scarred by it that much. And it has been six years since the last one. So <laughs> perhaps those scars have healed over a bit, but let's yeah, I, I don't I'm not against reopening those scars. Yeah, well you I know we are getting to the end of the year now, aren't we? We will be looking to recruit people for next year's challenge. You'd be the only person, Greg, to be on a kind of scoreboard thing, you'd be the only person that's done it three times. So you'd be oh, top of the scoreboard. The hat trick, Jay. Oh, my sold, God, you you it to me. It. Here you go. <laughs> Woo. Right, oh. But before you know it, you're going to get Neil doing it again. You're going to no, get um, no, yeah, Carl no. Schelling doing it again. Everyone's going to be equaling him. Can't have you going too far, no, Jay. This, this, is, this is my last year, 100%. Definitely. Anyway. You know, I think you should consider it, Jason. I, I think a, a proportion of the reason why I did it again after doing it with you uh, uh, in year four was the whole podcasting thing and kind of meeting up regularly and having some kind of structure in, in kind of uh, playing games and that that kind of like playing games to completion and not just adding constantly to, to a backlog kind yep. of thing. So, um, yeah, you should consider it, mate. Because it's, it, is, it is good to regularly meet up have a chat. And the thing is now, we, compared to when we were doing it uh, six years ago, stuff like streaming, stuff like, you know, kind of uh, getting the community more involved and things like that is a lot more active and a lot more accessible yeah. than it was. So we did, a, we, we're we going to do another one, I think, next week, aren't we, Dave? I think we're going to do another kind of Twitch yep. kind of uh, stream of... Um, I think it's another night at the movies for us all. Yeah, so we, 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 you know, getting doing stuff like that, it's actually quite interesting, quite it's quite fun to do. So I think you should definitely consider hosting next year and doing doing all that. Yeah, well, I'll have some discussions. We'll, we'll, we'll see what's going on. I'm not, I'm not, not writing myself. Thoughts <laughs> <laughs> and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> <laughs>
Plus, I've got to look at what's, what's due to come out next year first before I make any firm decisions. Yeah, that, yeah no, so that's there's, there's lots of games I've got to buy and not complete. Come on. Yeah, I think that's it for questions that we've got. I just down sort of, on notepads. <clears throat> I may just realize that they, I don't know, they deliberately jumped over a question because I just kept highlighting questions. I keep forgetting that you guys can see what I'm doing in a live document. <laughs> I can see you there. <laughs> well, we kind, we kind of missed one, and uh, it may be because I was dicking around over here and you were like, shit, is Matty trying to tell me to move on? Totally not. Uh, that's a great question. Dave, one last question. Right, Jace, do you remember what your jokers or gifts were in those years? I don't think we had gifts back then. I think that's a new loophole that's been pulled in. I really can't remember having gifts, did we, Neil? Certainly didn't um, in the first one. I think I think I think there was such a thing as a, a as like a, a birthday present. If somebody gifts you something, okay, then you're yeah. beyond your control. But I think if I, rem- I, I I'm not going to answer for you, but if I remember, I don't think I don't think any of us did it that year. I think we did just a Joker. That was like the kind of the thing. The, the big one that stands out was obviously Matt's Joker, which was Black <laughs> yes. Desert. Black Desert, which was Black he was, he was raving about it so much. <laughs> he thought and he then... found a loophole, <laughs> did he? He just thought, right, I found the best way of uh, cheating in this. I just buy a game that never ends. But didn't he pull the Joker after about like two two months yep. or something? Two months in, and then it was a February, instantly wasn't it? regretted it like for the yep. rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, he was two weeks into buying it. He was like, "Oh, I seem to have made a mistake. This is terrible. It's not yeah. going to do." Absolutely ridiculous. Um, no, I can't remember mine. I'm afraid, Dave. Uh, if I'd have had a bit more preparation, I might have looked back. But uh, no, I'm welcome for anybody to come in and let me know that. I can definitely remember. From my experience, like I mentioned previously, looking at you in awe when we did that uh, that year together, that the fact that you didn't even use a joke. What that year, year was so... the first one? Was it 2012? No Facts. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm frantically Googling. I mean, I'm, I'm not that good at maths, but if, if we're on year 10... Probably um, makes sense. <laughs> I mean, that would make sense, but it's also... It's also... It's also, it's, it's also math. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was it not uh, on the first one? Was it not Borderlands Two? Was my Joker because I absolutely adore Borderlands because that came out September the eighteenth, twenty twelve, and I remember um, going to MLGX. Uh, me and Will both dragged down our Xboxes uh, a monitor each. We went to this hotel in London um, down the road from um, where was it? You used to be at. Uh, it was called it was called that was it um we had this hotel room booked and it was literally on about the 19th floor you know these big tall townhouses in london it was literally at the very top one of those we both lugged our suitcases me down from birmingham um or bristol i think it was at the time uh will down from scotland the heaviest suitcases ever dragged them up to the top of this building just so we could set up our two tellies in the room and play borderlands together and um, I think we ended up playing about three hours on the first day, then didn't play it all because we were <laughs> fucking pissed as ourselves. <laughs> so it was absolutely pointless. I think to the point where Will just threw his monitor away because he didn't want to take it back to Scotland. He couldn't be asked to carry it. Is, it about. Is, is that the gaming version of leaving your tent at Glastonbury? Well, well, exactly what I was about to say. Is it, yeah. Going to a festival and thinking, fuck this, I can't be asked to pack this away. Right. That was a did, stupid idea, but thanks. I did that at my stag mat, if you remember. Um, I, I think I left my tent and most of my possessions behind in that field because I could not be bothered to carry him back to the car. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a thing. I I Borderlands 2 is one of the games I I re, I played a, a lot of Borderlands, I remember. Two did they have it like a proper more emphasis on it having to be like co-op rather than you, you couldn't play it solo, you couldn't those get the same like, enjoyment no, you, level. No you could it, those games are always better co-op obviously. Um, mm. and, and playing with the different classes always uh, enables you to to play it in a different way and to, to use all the different classes um, in the right way. And the same with right. Borderlands 3. I don't, I don't think by any means you have to. And I certainly try, dive back into Borderlands 3 and, and uh, still haven't completed the campaign, obviously. Why, why, why would you? Because you changed um, And uh, I still pop in from time to time and just marvel at how fantastic it is to play and how easy it is to jump back in. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. The, the trouble with me, and you know this, Neil, is that I play games wrong. So um, 
I love nothing better than a big open world game, but yeah, I don't, I don't play them as they're meant to be played. So, <laughs> yeah. for example, uh, Fallout Three is a good example. Uh, yes. Come out the first vault, the very first thing you're meant to do is walk straight forward and go to Megaton. So when I played Fallout Three, I didn't do that. I turned left out of the vault and went around the entire edge of the map for about eighty hours um, before I went to Megaton. Just met everything in the game, applied <laughs> to everything. Um, I did the same in Elden Ring. I did the same in Skyrim. I did the same in Fallout 4. Um, yeah, open world games, I just I don't play them right. I play them my way. It's fine. I can remember you having a conversation in year four uh, where and we had a, and it, was a, it was a lengthy conversation because I think I think AD was playing or attempting to play The Witcher. And we start talking about uh, fast travel. And how you, oh. at the time, or whether you still got this opinion that fast travel is wrong. Nobody well, should I, fast travel. I, I don't like fast travel. I've, I had to use it in Halo Infinite because um, I don't have as much time. But back in the days when I used to have enough time to play games, I would never fast travel. Um, I've been known on Skyrim to walk from one side of the map to the other encumbered because I don't want to drop the items I've got. I would never ride a horse, and I never fast travelled <laughs> in Skyrim. <laughs> I can tell you now, to walk from one side to the other encumbered takes approximately one hour and 47 minutes. <laughs> is that, is, is it a crow flies? I mean, can you just like, strap it? As, as straight as you possibly can go. And, uh, can, you strap an elastic, can you slap an elastic band to it? A- AKA sort of like Spinky when he got that achievement in the Rocket League. Do you remember that? Do you remember that, yeah. con- that controversy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, sure. that, there's, like, there'd be dragons and things in that game. I'm not sure it would work. There'd be mountain uh, faces you can't get over and stuff like that. But yeah, no, I remember that. I remember those conversations about fast travel. Dude. Absolutely amazing. Excellent stuff. Fuck fast travel. That's what I say. <laughs> fast travel's up there with quick save people. <laughs> <laughs> Right then, Jace. So uh, you spoke about the disc golf earlier. Have you got anything else to pimp? And where can people find you if they want to find out more? Well, if people want to find me, um, I'm Jace Stokes. So J A Y C E S C O K E S. Twitter, Facebook, everything. Um, our organisation is called Disc Golf for All. So uh, you can go on. Facebook, if you just type in at Disc Golf for All, or one word, you can find us on there. Um, you can also find us on discgolfforall.com. Um, see the work we're doing. Um, as you've mentioned before, I'll be pimping that a little bit more to uh, try it. and get people involved and to maybe do a bit of fundraising as well, because fundraising for um, charities and um, community organizations is very important. Um, we are fully non profit and stuff, so we're not taking money out of people's pockets for no reason. Um, but yeah, generally, I'm around. Uh, Jason Space Stokes on Xbox. Yeah, come find me. Come play some games. Set me some challenges. Yeah. Challenge him at, at Rocket League at your peril. Unless you're really good, in which case I'll just cry off. Yeah, <laughs> then you just rage quit. <laughs> see you later. Uh, thanks, uh, boys. I do appreciate you having me on, and uh, obviously it's nice to reminisce and catch up with you all because we don't see each other as often as we should. No, we don't. Um, but let's do more. Right, shit, aren't they? Pandemic they are. been shit. <laughs> Let's not have a pandemic again. That was yeah, shit. can we arrange yeah, not let, to let's have a pandemic? Yeah, let's skip the next one. If anyone yeah. gets monkeypox, just stay in. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just wear rubber gloves. I just won't, I won't tell you about it. You won't be able to see the pox on me. So with that said, gentlemen, I think uh, that's come to the end of a fantastic evening. Lovely to see you all. And yep. see you soon. Thanks Bye. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. If you ever want to host the, the equivalent of the Paralympics on Rock, Rocket League, I'm sure we can do it. <laughs>